<laughs> yes, it lives. Hey guys, this is a laptop CPU and it has pins on the back, a socketed laptop CPU. Well, I found the perfect motherboard to put this into a desktop computer, so let's do it. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your computer technician. Real quick, if you're new around here and you're into tech, PC hardware, streaming, tutorials, news and reviews, you're in the right place. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that like button while you're down there. Also, I stream every Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific on Twitch at twitch.tv slash coalition gaming crew. So stop in, drop a follow, let's talk some tech. Anyways, let's get to the video. So the parts going into the system are going to be as follows. Let's talk about them. We have the RTX 2060 from NVIDIA. This is the Founders Edition, super solid thing. Main reason going with this, uh, virtual link port on the back, AKA USB 3.0 port which we'll get into more later as to why I need that. Got a 725 gig Crucial SSD and a 500 gig game drive just to have for extra space on there. A Pivia LED fans. Now the motherboard doesn't have RGB controller so I need one of these that have it, its own controller. Then we have the Portwell Wade 8321LU motherboard. This again we'll talk more about this in just a second but this is a very unique piece of the system because it takes a laptop CPU. Now, a case I've really, really wanted to work with is the Landly TU-150. So I ordered this one, bought it myself. They didn't send it out or anything like this. This is just something I really want to do. This is a passion project of mine. I wanted to build in this case. This case looks awesome. Again, it's the Landly TU-150 and uh, built for mini ITX and I guess mini DTX cases as well, which you guys may have seen a lot of other tech YouTubers build with this setup. One of the main reasons I really like this case, because I like to go to LAN parties or do my own and sometimes do other people's houses, is little handle. This handle is awesome. I've always wanted a case with a little handle like this that was more portable like this thing is. So it's cool that it just sort of integrates into the system like that and it becomes flush. This is honestly like a killer feature of this case. For the power supply, I went with this SFX unit from Silverstone to 500 watt. In this case, it should be perfectly fine. The laptop CPU barely draws any power at all. It's rated for 45 watts, so there's plenty of leftover power for everything else in the system. But I'm not crazy about the prices of power supplies right now, and then you shrink it down to SFX and it gets even more expensive. This thing was just as expensive as the case, for example. And the processor, i7-3610QM, four core, eight thread processor, 3.1 gigahertz boost on all cores, but it can turbo faster than that if you need less cores. It should still be a plenty capable CPU for 1080p gaming, which is what I'm going to be using it for. And uh, yeah, came out of a dead gaming laptop back in the day. I knew I could do something with it. So I set out to do something like this. Now we have actually made a video on using this CPU and that motherboard in the past, but it wasn't a very good video. So we're re revisiting it now. So let's get more into the motherboard. So a motherboard like this, I found it on eBay for $35, $35 ship. So $70 total at the time back in 2017 when I originally got it. Honestly, I thought that was a pretty good deal. It has PCI Express 16, has some SATA ports. It looks like it uses standard PSU connector. Uh, well, 20 pin in this case, instead of 24 pin. But honestly, what makes it the most unique here is the fact that it uses a laptop CPU socket. This is, I believe, socket G2 or RPGA988B. Um, not common and Intel basically stopped using socketed laptop CPUs after fourth gen Haswell. So anything that you look up on Intel CPUs, if it ends in QM, that generally means it's socketed or PGA like the AMD CPUs. And uh, that's a that's pretty unique, like I said. It's not very common to find those CPUs. Most of the time, CPUs are soldered to the motherboard, and that's that. But in this case, I was able to salvage a friend's dead laptop, pull the CPU out, the CPU out, and build a whole system around it. And I thought that was pretty cool. Now, this motherboard does have its shortcomings, though. It only had one DIMM slot, and it uses laptop RAM. So here it is on this side. One DIMM slot, it will not boot with 16 gig sticks it will only boot with 8 gig sticks. So I was kind of sad that I'd be limited to 16 gigs. However, let's flip it over. And as you can see, 
it now has a second dim slot on the back. This motherboard came with uh, basically little solder spots ready to go to add another dim slot. And I found this shop locally here in Riverside where I live and uh, it's a place called Fix Enter. So if you need anything like, uh, well, board level repair, cell phone repair, micro soldering, anything like that, I'll leave a link in the description to their shop if you live in the SoCal area. But uh, definitely this is pretty cool because they are able to get this thing soldered on. I dropped in another eight gig stick and now I have 16 gigs of RAM operating in dual channel on this super unique mini ITX motherboard. So the, uh, the pins here, as you may notice, well, first they put this stuff in there for shipping, I guess, that's supposed to protect the pins, whatever. I had to pick some of that out. That was the first obstruction. But second, a normal uh, USB header does not plug in here. You can see this is way bigger. This is a whole different size. This will not, this will not fit there. That is called a different pitch. These pins are a different pitch than your standard uh, USB header pins. So on Mod DIY, the link will be in the description below, hopefully if they still have it in stock, because it's been a while since I ordered from them, um, I found this pitch adapter. And this pitch adapter basically breaks out the USB 2.0 header from the small pitch. I believe this is a two millimeter pitch and I needed to go out to 2.5 millimeter pitch or 2.54 for standard USB. And it breaks it out to basically work with any front USB header, just like that. And with that done, then you can plug into any front USB, but most modern cases nowadays are USB 3.0. So then you need another adapter to convert USB 2.0 to 3.0. Well, at least for make the front USB 3.0 headers work as 2.0. So, hey, a lot of uh, little extra things going on here, but this is already sort of a MacGyver job from the get go. So we're just rolling with the thing. So the motherboard, at least from the vendor that I bought it from on eBay, and most of them are either the same vendor or all come with this CPU cooler, is this big solid copper block of a cooler. However, the fan that they come with, I believe it's a little 50 millimeter fan, um, they're, they're super loud. And I found this fan from GLID, the Silent 5, which is pretty quiet for the, a small fan. And uh, there's no PWM control on this one, even though it does have a PWM uh, uh, header on the motherboard. But this thing is quiet enough. I installed it onto the cooler, replaced that loud stock fan, and that's pretty much all I did in terms of changing anything that this motherboard came with, aside from, I guess, soldering the, <laughs> the dim slot on the back. But uh, this, I had this fan on this cooler way before the whole solder job. This is all you'd need to do to keep it somewhat quiet, and uh, this fan works pretty good. Let's install the CPU and get started with this build. Uh, this socket resembles an AMD socket. It's actually pretty interesting, but it doesn't have a zip lever. You, so the little lever that you move up and down to lock the CPU and unlock it doesn't have that. It's, a, it's more of a, like a screwdriver locking mechanism. So let's drop the CPU in, match the arrows up. Arrows in the top right corner, arrows in the top right corner. So we just go like this. There we go. And no lever, like I mentioned, but you just bring in the uh, flathead screwdriver. And there we go, locked in. Now the CPU will not come out.
So here it is, build is complete, laptop CPU in a desktop computer. I'll be at mini ITX, but you know, that just helps with the whole portability thing, which is honestly a good thing. Now, one little thing with this case that I ended up kind of struggling with a little bit was the um, routing of the power supply cables. Uh, it turns out you really do need power supply extensions with one like this, because if you don't, and the included power supply cables aren't already long enough, you're gonna have problems, and that's why these aren't necessarily routed up through the top of the case like most builds are with this one. But it still looks okay. We managed to make everything work good. It, the Apivia fans, they look nice, honestly, and everything booted and it's good to go. You guys saw the benchmarks. You see that for 1080p 60 gaming, it's still pretty relevant. So we also have uh, some VR stuff that I'm gonna be using it for, so hopefully we're good there. There is a little bit of an upgrade path on the CPU socket. An i7-3820QM, I think, is the goal, but they're still kind of expensive right now at around $150 on eBay, so I don't want to go that route unless I absolutely have to, so yeah. So if you like this video, you enjoyed the content, you enjoyed uh, watching me put a laptop CPU in a desktop, make sure you click that subscribe button. We always got more stuff like this coming. That like button and uh, follow us on our Discord, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. It'll be linked down in the description below. And I believe right over here on this side, we have some more related videos and other things for you guys to check out. So make sure you click one of those. Watch a, a whole lot of our content. We got a lot, a lot of uh, catalog back there for you guys to check out. Click one. Come on.